Leader of the Opposition, Keir Starmer. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. A book is being written about the Prime Minister's time in office. <laughs> Apparently, it's going to be out by Christmas. Is that the release date or the title? <laughs> just under two months, and I have delivered the energy price guarantee, making sure that people aren't paying £6,000 bills this winter. I've reversed the national insurance increase, and I've also taken steps, and we will be taking steps, to crack down on the militant unions. Now, what, what Mr Speaker, I think, Mr Speaker, that is more of a record of action than the honourable gentleman in his two and a half years in the job. Yes. Mr Speaker, last week the Prime Minister ignored every question put to her. Instead, she repeatedly criticised Labour's plan for a six-month freeze on energy bills. This week, the Chancellor made it her policy. How can she be held to account when she's not in charge? Mr Speaker, our policy is to protect the most vulnerable for two years. But I, I had to take the decision, because of the economic situation, to adjust our policies. I am somebody who is prepared to front up. I am prepared to take the tough decisions. Unlike the honourable gentleman, who hasn't done anything on businesses, he's done nothing to say he'll protect people after one year. He's got no plan. Here's Starmer. Mr. Speaker, last week the Prime Minister stood there and promised absolutely no spending reductions. They all cheered. This week, the Chancellor announced a new wave of cuts. What's the point of a Prime Minister whose promises don't even last a week? Well, I can assure the right honourable gentleman that spending will go up next year and it will go up the year after. But of course, we need to get value for taxpayers' money. The Labour Party has pledged hundreds of billions of spending pledges, none of which they've retracted. The honourable gentleman needs to reflect the economic reality in his policies. Mr Speaker, those spending cuts are on the table for one reason and one reason only, because they crashed the economy. And working, working, people, working people are going to have to pay 500 quid more a month on their mortgages. And what's the Prime Minister's response to say she's sorry? What does she think people will think and say? That's all right. I don't mind financial ruin. At least she apologised. Yeah. Prime Minister. I do think there has to be some reflection of economic reality from the party. <laughs> office. The fact is, the fact is that interest rates, interest rates are rising across the world, and the economic conditions have worsened. And we are being honest. We're levelling with the public. Unlike the honourable gentleman who simply won't do it. And what is the honourable gentleman doing about the fact that workers, train workers, are again going on strike? The fact is, he refuses to condemn the workers. We are bringing forward policies. Mr. Speaker, we are bringing forward policies that are going to make sure. Our railways are protected. People going to work are protected. He backs the strikers. We back the strivers. Mr Speaker, she's asking me questions because we're a government in waiting and they're an opposition opposition in waiting. There's no... There's no getting away from this. Millions of people are facing horrendous mortgage repayments, and she's admitted it's her fault. She shouldn't have conducted an economic experiment on the British public. But it's not just her. They put her there. They're keeping her there. Why on earth would anyone trust the Tories with the economy ever again? Notice, Mr. Speaker, he's not actually objecting to a single economic policy that the Chancellor announced on 
Monday. He's refusing to condemn the strikers. We're on the side of working people. We're going to legislate to make sure we keep our railways open. The honourable gentleman refuses to do anything. Mr Speaker, the only mandate she's ever had is from members opposite. It was a mandate built on fantasy economics and it ended in disaster. The country's got nothing to show for it except the destruction of the economy and the implosion of the Tory party. I've got the list here. 45p tax cut, gone. Corporation tax cut, gone. 20p tax cut, gone. Two-year energy freeze, gone. Tax-free shopping, gone. Economic credibility, gone. And her supposed best friend, the former Chancellor, he's gone as well. They're all gone. So why is she still here? Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, I am a fighter and not a quitter. I have acted in the national interest to make sure that we have economic stability. Order. Order. I'm going to hear the Prime Minister. I suggest that all members need to hear the answer. Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I am a fighter and not a quitter. We have delivered on the energy price guarantee. We have. We've delivered on the energy price guarantee. We've delivered on national insurance. We are going to deliver to stop the militant trade unions